I appreciate you stopping by to check out yet another fun-filled, action-packed episode of Vintage Audio Review. In this episode, I'm going to talk about, you guessed it, this Conrad Johnson PV-10A tube preamplifier. In 1992, Conrad Johnson sold this for $995, which would be about $2,100 today. It features a moving magnet phono input, as well as four line level inputs and a tape monitor loop plus two pairs of preamplifier outputs. All of the connections are gold plated color coded RCA unbalanced jacks except for the phono lug which is not gold plated. I will give a tour of the front and the back of the unit and then uh, I'll remove the cover and you can see what it looks like inside and then there will be the measurements. And finally, I will give you my opinion as to how it sounded. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee, a glass of water, a beer, a glass of wine, whiskey, whatever you need, and uh, enjoy the video. Here is a closer view of the Conrad Johnson PV-10A. Starting to the right, we have our on-off switch with an LED that will come on when the power is on. We have a volume control, which has a nice feel to it but is not detented. This guy right here is our balance control which has a detent in the center position. Here's our tape monitor switch right here and then we have our input selector with inputs for auxiliary, video, CD tuner and moving magnet phono. This guy right here is a balance in and out switch which is something unique at least for things that I have seen either amplifiers, preamplifiers or receivers where the balance control is actually bypassed in order to give you a better signal integrity if you may. You often see that with tone controls where they bypass the tone controls but this is just strictly to bypass the balance control altogether. In this case that switch is broken or needs to be clean because if you press it in to where you would be using the balance control you lose one of the channels and it wasn't really important to adjust that because the balance between the two channels is outstanding as you will see in the data. This obviously is the rear of the Conrad Johnson PV-10A and the really only unique thing sort of about this is it does have two sets of main outputs right here which is very handy. We have our tape in and outs right here for the tape monitor circuit and then we have four line level inputs here and then a phono input here for a moving magnet cartridge and then here's our grounding lug for the phono input. Here we have the THD SNR at 1 kilohertz with a 2.5 volt or ADBV input signal applied and in this case we're using the CD input. The volume is adjusted so that we have about 0 dB of gain and you can see we've got uh, 2.5 volts uh, coming out. Our THD for this level of input signal is supposed to be 0.1% and we are meeting that requirement. The SNR is uh, right around 90. The spec is better than 92 dB for these conditions and the THD plus noise is about minus 60 dB. I'm going to bring up the harmonics. So this plot shows the different harmonic levels and our fundamental 1 kilohertz uh, tone is here and the second harmonic are these guys, third harmonic here. And the big thing to note is see how much bigger the second or even harmonic is than the third harmonic and I just kind of wanted to uh, point that out. Once you get beyond that they're they're a lot smaller but this first harmonic the even one is definitely bigger than the third harmonic. This plot shows the frequency response of the PV-10A from 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz and this thing looks really really flat. It's down maybe uh, 0.05 dB, 0.03 dB at 20 kilohertz. The channels are balanced within about 0.05 dB, so this thing is pretty darn flat. This plot shows the crosstalk or the isolation between the left and right channels for the CD input. In this case, the 6 dBV signal is applied to just the left input 
and the write input is terminated into a short and what you're seeing is the amount of the left channel that is bleeding over to the right channel. You would like that number as negative as you could get it. In this case, we're down about maybe 48 dB at uh, 20 kilohertz and then it gets down to maybe oh, 70 dB of isolation or crosstalk at one kilohertz and then uh, it gets a little worse as you get lower in frequency, maybe minus 65 dB. But overall, that is a pretty good isolation or crosstalk. What we are looking at here is the isolation between two different inputs. In this case, we have a 2 volt or 6 dBV signal applied to the CD input. We have the auxiliary input selected. And the auxiliary inputs are terminated into short. So what we're seeing is the leakage from the CD on over to the auxiliary. And there was no specification for it, but you can kind of tell that aside from the 60 hertz humbar, it is better than 70 dB more or less across the band. The PV10A has a maximum gain of 18 dB and a maximum output of 20 volts. Here I've got a 6 dBV or 2 volt input applied to the CD input and the gain is let's say 17 and a half dB that's pretty close to 18 dB. Our voltage is about 15 volts so that's about 5 volts shy of the maximum voltage. You can see that the THD is up to maybe 0.7 percent and our SNRs are looking really good over 100 dB. The THD plus noise has drop down to about minus 44 dB. Here we have the PV10A's multi-tone response and it is better than we'll say minus 80 so that would be about 15 bits of distortion free range so that is really pretty good for a piece of vintage gear. Here we have the THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz with a minus 40 dBV or 10 millivolt applied to the phono input. The volume control is set at the halfway point, which for the other testing yielded 0 dB of gain. Here we're showing about 48.4 to 48.7 dB of gain through the phono stage. And you can see the THD is anywhere from 0.13% to 0.09%, depending on the channel. The SNRs are 64 to 65 dB, and the THD plus noise is anywhere from minus 57 to minus 59 dB. And overall, this is looking really good. I do have an RIAA correction applied, which kind of helps level out this slope. But overall, this is looking really good for a phono stage. Here is the frequency response of the PV10A's phono input with a minus 40 dBV or 10 millivolt signal applied. The specification is plus or minus 0.25 dB, and it looks like the right channel would be meeting that pretty much. And the left channel is meeting it's maybe up 0.25 dB at 20 hertz and down four tenths of a dB at 20 kilohertz. That, that is really outstanding. Now, the two channels are balanced to within, I would say, about four tenths of a dB. The greatest separation between them is here. Unfortunately, the balance in out switch this actually has a switch that can bypass the balance potentiometer and it does not work right for the left channel so it has been in the balance out position for all the testing i have done and that is for my listening point. test with the pv10a i connected it to my bryston 2b lp power amplifier of which there is a review on and the power amp was connected to the Wilson Watt 3 Puppy 2 loudspeakers, of which there is a review on as well. For my source, I used a recently acquired WIM Mini Streamer, which was playing uh, CDs that I ripped as WAV files. The sound of the PV10A is great. I don't know how to describe it other than it doesn't lack anything, in my opinion. It did a great job of reproducing bass and treble. It's quiet. There is a small amount of hiss if you bring your ears fairly close to the uh, loudspeaker tweeter area, which is very common in almost every amplifier or preamplifier, although I will say the Brystons are totally quiet. However, hooked up to the 
preamp there was a bit of uh, hiss and it's very slight and not a distraction at all it's it's really really low but overall as the measurements show this is a very formidable preamplifier and it sounds really good the top of the unit does get like warm it's probably in the low hundred degree F I didn't measure it but it's not like you're gonna burn your hand uh, if you touch it however I would not put a candle on top of it because most likely it's gonna melt other than that it's it's just a, a, a great listen to and would be a joy to own the only thing that I noticed other than there's just a little bit of wee bit of hiss which is normal and there was a small turn on pop thump when it was powered on uh, not when it was powered off just when it was powered on and I mentioned earlier in a video that the balance bypass switch if you go to actually bypass that so you would be using the balance control that does not work one of the channels is out it wasn't worthwhile to go in and fix it for this owner and you know, the channels are very well balanced uh, maybe in the phono stage uh, they're off a little bit but uh, for the most part it's really uh, the preamp just sounds really good I typically don't listen to the phono stages but overall as a line level input it, it did a really good job it has a lot of uh, power it has a, um, a decent amount of gain out of this and you can put I think it was 14 or 15 volts out so it can drive any kind of power amplifier just about that has low gain and it, it does a real nice job so if you have a chance to pick one of these up or you've been thinking about getting one and you want to that would it would be a good thing to do I will say the owner replaced all five tubes on this so when I got it all the tubes had been replaced and he wanted me to check it out before he put it in his system so overall I think he will enjoy having it in his system so once again, I thank you for watching this video. I would like to hear any comments you have, so please leave them. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. And if you like the video, that's also a good thing to do. And until next time, have a great day or night.